Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the former. Today we're looking at Elf, which was a 1991 release from Ocean Software, developed by Nirvana Systems. It's a type of game that was known as an arcade adventure at the time, in that it incorporates both arcade-style gameplay and more in-depth interaction such as object manipulation, talking to characters, and other mechanics more typically associated with the adventure game genre. The game was very well received at the time of its original release for its excellent graphics and its challenging levels. And it's notable that even the Atari ST version had these excellent visuals, which was a welcome sight at the time. The ST often lost out to the Amiga when it came to 2D visuals, so it was always nice when the two platforms had something approaching parity when it came to visual fidelity. Now this is one of the Atari ST games I've actually got a physical copy of, so let's have a rummage through that just before I drop things on the floor. So here is the box for Elf from Ocean. You see a little sticker down there that says this product is for double-sided ST drives only. So this would only work on the slightly later model uh, disk drives for the Atari ST that took 720k discs instead of the original 360k discs, the single-sided ones. Here is the back with a lot of blurb, as you can see, as was normal for the time. Really sort of missing blurb on modern game boxes because you don't tend to get a lot of it. You maybe get a few screenshots and uh, like a paragraph or so, but you certainly don't get anything like that. So let's see what it says. The strangest things happen in fairy tales, but nothing so strange as the experiences you will encounter on your travels as Cornelius the Elf. Your magic ring can cast many spells, increasing in power as you tread deeper into the mystical lands of gooks and goblins. Even the castle guards, low-life beings with the IQ of a cold steel rivet, are on a Get Smart campaign. They may seem a little backward to start with, but these rivet-headed bother bullies will soon become cantankerous tricky dickies if you let them. Many weird villainous creatures and devious puzzles test your gameplay technique and your Gnostic powers. You can even control some of the background game features, allowing you to get to where you think you should be. Numerous secret areas lie deep within the forest where vital clues can help you with your quest, but beware, your own ghost may materialize to haunt you. Uh, and then you've got the same in both French and German. Sonst taucht noch dein eigener Gaust auf und fängt an, der zu spuken. Right, let's have a look inside. So inside we have a manual, which we'll have a look at in just a sec. And then we have two double-sided discs, along with a lovely ocean-branded plastic bag to keep them all in. But uh, most people never bothered keeping things inside those plastic bags, but kept them anyway, because, you know, part of the packaging. Yeah, this, uh, this manual is really nice quality. I don't know how well you can see that on the video, but it's, um, it's sort of printed on almost like parchment paper. So it's got a very, very nice tactile feel to it. Um, it's reasonably substantial, but again, uh, it's in several different languages. I think three different languages, English, French, and German from the look of things. Yeah, here we are. Okay, so we begin with the scenario. You, the brave Cornelius, must rescue your girlfriend, Elisa, who has been abducted by Necrilus the Not Very Nice. To do this, you must travel through eight levels of forest, ruins, lake, swamp, caves, mountains, and two halves of the castle. You must finally locate and destroy the winching mechanisms that are lowering your loved one into a large bubbling vat and then do battle with Necrolus himself. On your journey, you will find many useful objects scattered about the landscape. Use these to the best of your abilities. Herbs and pets, when collected, will allow you to purchase pieces of equipment from the numerous shops. Slaying an end of level guardian will give you a green crystal. Use these to gain access to Necrolus's chamber. Good luck, Cornelius. You're going to need it. Okay, so uh, what have we got then? We've got a bit about the controls. So you can save your game. You can move around. You can jump. You can climb ladders. You can shoot. That's about it. It's, it's all fairly intuitive to control, but it, as I said, with the sort of arcade adventure descriptor, there's some interface elements in this that it has in common with adventure games and role-playing games. So you've got much more in-depth kind of interaction with certain elements in the environment that you would have in just a, a straightforward platform game. And that's what makes games like this stand out. 
So, gameplay. Eight levels. Uh, yeah, just a rundown of the basic levels there. Excuse me. Uh, some tips. Hints and tips. We'll probably need these. Help and want are a good place to start when you're talking to a character. So there's like a, there's like a keyword system in this, a bit like you have in um, some of the early Ultima games, where you talk to someone and then it asks you to type in a keyword. So if you type in like help, you're asking them for help. If you ask uh, want, you're asking them if they want something and so on. And that can give you an idea of what you should be looking for in the level that you're on. Watch the sides of the screen for flying enemies. Don't waste herbs or pets on frivolous items. Make a map before you get lost. If you can buy the flying machine, do so. And don't drop litter in the countryside. Okay. Yeah. So that's about it, really. Uh, aside from an advert for Childline, bizarrely. Childline is the free national helpline for children and young people in trouble or danger. It provides a confidential counselling service for any child or young person with any problem 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Childline listens, comforts and protects. Uh, I believe Childline is still a thing, so... Nice for them to promote it, but it's just a little bit random for that to appear in the credit section of the manual, but, uh, well, not complaining. Anyway, I remember this game being really difficult, so I'm not going to make any promises how far we're going to get in this today, but we'll give it a good go anyway. Let's go play Elf. Okay, here we are with Elf from Ocean. I remember playing this game quite a bit back in the day and being really impressed with its visuals. Um which was sort of the main thing that people praised in its reviews. I was never able to get that far in it, though, because I remember it being very difficult. Um, so I'm not counting on being able to get particularly far today, but I am interested to revisit it because I... I remember this being sort of quite a cool game. Please do the following. Select your language. If connected, insert Elf Disk 2 into any external drive. So you can use two disk drives in this one if you want to, so you don't have to do disk swaps. Which is nice. We've done that. Right, here we go. So, on this title screen here, you can choose between music and sound effects by hitting F9. Press F1 to F7 to load a saved game, if you've saved one. Um, and with F10, you can turn on or off the uh, death sequence at the end. So, I'll, I'll leave that on for the minute so you can see what happens when you get a game over in this. Because it will inevitably happen. Um, but you can turn it off if you want to. Um, the reason for that is it's, <laughs> it's not very nice. <laughs> All right, let's begin. With a beating heart, you step forward into the ominous forest. Hate-filled eyes stare back at you from the shadows. Momentarily, you think of turning back, but the thought of Elisa drives you on. So here we are. We are Cornelius the Elf. We can bounce up and down like this. We can duck. We can shoot. And we can also go in places. And this unfolds as this sort of flick screen scrolling. Now, there are certain enemies in this that you mustn't kill. You're, you're not supposed to shoot those rabbits, for example. Um, I forget what the consequences are for shooting the rabbits. But as you explore, you'll find... various bits and pieces that will be helpful. Right, can't go any further that way. So, I need to climb up and investigate. So basically, you, you, want, to, you want to shoot anything that looks like a monster. Fruit? Does that heal us? It does not. Hearts probably do, though. There we go. So this is from that delightful era of games where people didn't understand the value of invincibility frames. So you take damage in this, you keep taking damage for as long as you're in contact with an enemy. I have picked up a chicken. Oh, and you lose health for falling too far, which is nice. Ouch! There's one life down already. Now, you see that counter at the bottom left? You are invincible while that's there. So, the game knows that invincibility frames are helpful. It just doesn't implement them 
Um, when you just get hit. Alright, let's see what's over here. Right, those sort of pulsating plants there, those are herbs that if you pick up, um, you can use them as currency in the shops. So there's no sort of coins or anything in this, but you do you do pick up herbs and pets. And you can use those to get power-ups and upgrades and useful items and that sort of thing. Right, and this tent here, you see the icon down in the corner, means we can interact with it. So you push up on the joystick to interact with it. Hello, Pale Fez, have them to trade with. Yeah, other thing, this game came out in the early 90s uh, when, well, uh, certain attitudes... Hurry up, Cornelius. Uh, certain attitudes um, were a little bit different, shall we say. Talk. Talk about what? Help. Me no help, short one. You have on pointy ears. Want. Me want things that I'm Indian can use. Uh, do you want this? The Indian does not want the uncooked chicken. The Indian does not want the bird seed. The Indian does not want the container. A plain container with a worn out label, a bowl full of bird seed. And an uncooked chicken. Okay, I don't think there's much we can do there right now. There's a door there. I'm going to investigate what that door was. There's my ghost. You see that? You could probably just see there's my gravestone behind the um, the ladder there. So while you're on the on the screen that you died on. Uh, you may find your ghost comes after you, which is nice. In! What have we got here? Oh, it's a shop. Hey, are these trendy accessories or what? I okay, can't afford any of those. Can afford two-way shots. That will cost us one of the blueberries and one of the... whatever the snappy berries are. What else have we got? We can get some health back as well. What does that cost? One blueberry, one thing. You can get some advice, which costs you a pet, I think. Uh, are shots more useful than health? I don't know if you lose them when you die. Let's let's buy them and find out. A major friends were up and across ways firing. All right, let's do it. Sold to the man with the incredibly pointy ears. All right, can't afford anything else. So. So I can now fire up and sideways. Get out of here. Go oh no, I've died. You do keep your power ups. That's good. Right. I want that herb. You can fire while you're on ladders as well. That's nice. That's something I always thought was cool because I don't think I'd really seen that before in a game before I played this. I can't believe you take damage from that short distance. I can't go any further that way. Let's go this way. Talk to this man. Ah, hello there. Why are you one from me? As I said, let's 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 just lean into it as if we were playing it in the in the ninety, shall we? Uh, talk. Help. Head to where the sun rises. Some cooked chicken will go down a real tree. So we need to cook the chicken somehow. It's 
So I guess we need like a campfire or something. Let's explore along the bottom here and see what we can find. There's a parrot. Is it a parrot? Sitting on a perch is a bird who is currently molting very badly. What do you want? I'm afraid the bird does not understand that. Help. I'm afraid the bird does not understand that. Can we use a container on the bird? You feel better for drinking the contents of the bottle. Not sure that's what I wanted to do. Give! As the bird stuffs its gob full of corn, a feather falls off. You pick it up. things to pick up here and lots of things to shoot very tall ladder to climb that looks like a shop again I'm gonna go ahead and assume that all those doors are shops what have you got for us this time Exactly the same. Hello and welcome everybody. Pick anything just like that. You see, he's got a fez on, so he's like Tommy Cooper. See, this is what this is what British games are like. We make references to popular culture of the period, and be racist. <laughs> oh dear, it'd be funny if it wasn't true. It's still quite funny. That's the thing, though. Like stuff, stuff like the the way the Indian talks and the sort of exaggerated generic Oriental accents that the wise old sage is evidently supposed to have. They were just sort of seen as culturally acceptable at the time. This, I, like the Indian in particular, reminds me of um, a comic, uh, a strip in the comic The Beano, uh, where there was a character called Little Plum. He was a Native American. And all of the characters in that talk like that. They all put the word um in front of things and said how to each other and that sort of thing. You hear grunts from inside. Talk. I'm afraid the man in the toilet does not want to talk to you. Alright. I'll leave him be then. But yeah, it's it's just one of those things. It was It was okay at the time. It's not really okay now. But denying it ever happened isn't going to uh, isn't going to help anything really. So you know, it's a thing. It happened. Whoops! That's going to hurt. Yep, it hurt. Get down there. Ooh, that looks like a fire, although it's not lit. So let me guess, we need to find a way to light it. An unlit fire is before you, together with a spit. So we need something to light the fire with. Ow! Yep, 
You may have noticed by this point the fundamental issue with the arcade adventure genre. Um, which is that the two elements sort of don't really go together. <laughs> oh no! That's okay. In that the exploring and the puzzle solving and stuff is cool. Ooh, that's a one up. The exploring and the puzzle solving and stuff is cool. Uh, and and the sort of platform action is is cool. Although this is one of those games where the the enemy placement just feels very random. It just feels like they just sort of appear, and there's no sort of real way that you can prepare for that. You just sort of have to deal with it. Um. Ooh, I've got an idea. If we're going on racial stereotypes, the Indian will probably want a feather, won't he? To put in his hat. Double gravestone action there. I like how your ghost is wearing a pair of shades. There is like a potion you can get in this that turns you into a hero, which just makes your chin get huge. And you put on a pair of sunglasses, I think. <laughs> and there's like a werewolf potion as well, I think, if I remember correctly. I can't remember if I ever really got anywhere in this when I was a kid. I remember liking it though, because I mean, look at it, it's a lovely looking game. And it's got that sort of gradient sky effect that I was always a big fan of. Hello, pale face. Have them to trade with. Yes. Mm, have this old newspaper. An old newspaper. All right. I'm going to go ahead and guess that the guy in the toilet wants that to wipe his bum with. Because that's the sort of thing <laughs> that British games from this period would have referenced. Alright, keep climbing, don't die. Leap off. Suffer a small amount of damage. Uh... You take this, sir. Thanks to the newspaper, the soft stuff had run out. He gives you some matches. Well... It's a puzzle. Where could we possibly use this? Just that simple upgrade to that two-way shot makes the, the combat in this much easier. There is like a three-way shot you can do as well. Which is advisable to upgrade to when you can, but... And you can also power up your shots, I think. Makes them a bit bigger. Right, let's use the matches on the fire. Flamboyantly, you strike the match and then light the fire. You cook the chicken at 20 minutes per pound. Alright, so now we can take this back to the... Sage? Ouch! Need some health. Drop some health, please. It's not dropping health, that's damaging me. Cast you. Do like the enemy design. This is well. It's nicely creative. It's got that sort of. Is it with this being the the forest level? There's a nice sort of bug-like feeling to a lot of the enemies. Drop some hearts, please. 
No. Well, I'll just I'll just guess I'll die. <laughs> You, sir, take this and stop being racist. The sage appears not to want anything you may have. Hmm. Uh, want? I'm good chicken. We've got down a real teat. Bribe him with the chicken. You hear a door opening? Oh, I thought that was the end of the level. But it's not. Oh, and those are some spikes, and I've died. You see... You see the problem with arcade adventures. There's the death scene. <laughs> see? Not very nice. I kind of freaked me out a bit when I was a kid. Um, I think partly because... This is a really vague memory, but... I have a vague memory of seeing... I think it was a... I think it was a Tom and Jerry cartoon based on the French Revolution. Now, like I say, I'm not entirely convinced that I'm remembering that correctly, but I'm pretty sure that there was a Tom and Jerry cartoon based on the French Revolution, and there was a scene with a guillotine um, that implied that Tom got his head chopped off. And that kind of freaked me out. And sort of seeing that scene in Elf um, upset me a little bit as well. Obviously, it looks a bit, little bit silly now, but, well, you know... Uh, anyway, that is how Elf works, um, with a bit of effort and slightly more careful play than we had right there. Uh, could have probably got a bit further. Oh, it keeps you, keeps a screenshot of where you died, um, which is a nice touch. Oh, and the rating over on the right, um, that's to do with how, how many of the cute creatures you shot, I think. I don't know if that affects like your ending or anything like that, but... It certainly keeps track of how many of those you, you kill along the way. But yeah, interesting game. Interesting game that, was, like I say, was very, very, very well received back at the time. Um, and I can see why. There's there's elements of that that, if it was released today, it would have been refined a bit more. There's obviously elements of the dialogue that would be rather different if it was released today as well. Um, but in terms of structure and gameplay, it's, it's an interesting game that is just sort of subject to the flaws of the genre as a whole the arcade adventure genre um but yeah that's cool i, I may well return to that and have another go at that because I, I was actually quite enjoying myself there once you get your head around the combat once you upgrade your shots a little bit to make it a little bit easier to to shoot and so on and you just have to be very careful to try and take as little damage as possible um yeah there's there's fun to be had there but we'll leave that there for today. That is Elf from Ocean and uh, what were they called? Nirvana. Nirvana software or something like that. Anyway, you can see the credits on the screen. Yeah, let's leave it there. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again 